Young people's ability in different parts of the world to identify with Israel is sorely tested. Simply rallying to any possible assault on Israel's well-being is not what it means to be a Jew. There's more to a Jew than simply rallying around a flag. Any identity that is nurtured by a sense of victimhood in the final analysis is an unhealthy identity. All the diversity, all the potentiality of the Jewish people is not expressed because we are a society in conflict. What has identified us or what has allowed us to have a sense of collective identity in the past has been a sense of common history, of common destiny, and of a shared way of life and the values that come from that shared way of life. In this day and age, I'm not sure that the latter, the last of these, is any more the source of cohesion amongst the Jewish people. And therefore, there are very significant components within this collective, which we still now have to define in that context, that see themselves as detached from other parts in terms of their way of life and in terms even of their value system. So what we're left with, therefore, is a shared history and a shared destiny. In that regard, of course, we are still living under the impact of the two most shattering events, both for worse and for better, in the history of the Jewish people, arguably in the last 2,000 years, certainly at least in terms of uh, historic memory. And they are the tragedy of the Shoah, of the Holocaust, and the enormity of the transformation in, Jewish, in the Jewish condition through the establishment of the State of Israel and the rebirth of Jewish sovereignty in our ancestral homeland. Despite the valiant attempts to preserve the memory of the Shoah, the Shoah can evidently no longer serve as the galvanizing force between collective, among collective Jewish identity. It is hardly a turn, out, turn on for the younger generation, and it's not what keeps them connected, despite the frustration and as much as this may anger their parent and grandparent generation. And quite honestly, I have a lot of sympathy for that. Of course, I don't want people to forget the tragedy of the Shoah. I don't want them to, to understand its universal implications as well as its particular significance. But any identity that is nurtured by a sense of victimhood in the final analysis is an unhealthy identity. If Judaism is not a life, as our sages, as indeed scripture describes it, of a tree of life, a living, vital, vibrant, dynamic, beautiful, exciting, wonderful way of life to live, and why the hell should people have to have that cross to bear, if you'll excuse me mixing my metaphors? <laughs> so, Israel is the most mind-boggling transformation in the condition of the Jewish people. And the amazing thing about it is that in terms of its history, Zionism was opposed on both poles, by the most liberal segments in the Jewish community and by the most ultra-Orthodox. Today, I believe it's fair to say that there is not one single component in Jewish life that defines itself despite Israel. And if they do still exist, and pro probably we do still to need to acknowledge that the Ture Karta and Ahmadinejad's friends with long side locks and black hats are around, but in a very trivial number, they are nevertheless totally marginal to the collective of the Jewish people as a whole, and even marginal to ultra-orthodoxy. So across the board, the glue that binds the Jewish people today together is Israel. And this places an enormous, enormous responsibility on Israel. A responsibility which I don't even think Israel understands as a collective and its leadership, certainly with a kind of poor quality political leadership with which we have been cursed and continue to be cursed, certainly is unlikely to grasp the enormity of that. But thank God we survived despite our political leadership. One of the greatest testimonies that there is something divine in the very reality of this re-establishment of our independent life. But this now praises very heavy challenges. And uh, to, especially in recent times, Young people's ability in different parts of the world to identify with Israel is sorely tested. Peace for Israel is not only an imperative for the survival of its own society, it's not only an imperative for the dignity and national aspirations of the Palestinians, it's not only an imperative to be able to break through the hostility in the Muslim world towards Israel and Jewish people. It's not only essential in order to address the Islamic-West relationship, it's not only has ramifications with regards to global security, but ultimately it has critical ramifications with regards to Judaism itself. Because if Judaism itself is ultimately defined or influenced by a society that is in conflict and at war and has to be a fortress that by definition becomes insular and self-protective and loses its universal and its global responsibility and message, then the whole relationship of Jews everywhere gets distorted. Values get perverted everywhere. 
And therefore the challenge of peace so that Israel can be what it really sought to be in terms of reflecting the values that come from our prophetic tradition and heritage. Enable the Jewish people to flourish, not only in terms of its particularity, but in terms of its universality. This is the crucial issue that has bearing for Jews everywhere. And it will determine the face of the Jewish people in the future. And as a result, relationships between Jews and Christians and Muslims and as a result between Islam and the West. And once again, this tiny little people that is so insignificant numerically is forced to the very pivot, to the center, to the belly button of global conflict and interaction. Once upon a time it was geographical because all the nations, all the global empires had to cross this little piece of land if they wanted to access one empire or one continent to another. Now it is because we are at the cutting edge of the interaction between civilizations. And whether we like it or not, we're right at the center. And what we do has ramifications way beyond our understanding of how it pertains to us. So this challenge is of enormous significance. So bottom line is, Finding a way to resolve this conflict, breaking out of the cycle of violence in the Middle East is of critical consequence in determining who we are and who we will be. And this requires us to, 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 not to galvanize every single relationship and avenue and opportunity in order to build bridges, to be able to give new opportunities, to forge new horizons, and especially to offer hope both within the Jewish people and for all those connected and interacting with it. The challenge, of course, is on people like us to make sure that our communities understand, can perceive its vibrancy and its beauty and can experience that. But that, nevertheless, today has to be related in terms of the cohesion and the collective identity of the Jew Jewish people also to what Israel is. And therefore, Israel, if Israel is not a place that is seen as it is, as a culturally dynamic, innovative, technologically advanced society that's got beauty and dynamism, but also manifests the values of its heritage and a way of life that is exciting and diverse, yes, with various forms of its expression. All these things are limited at the moment by the fact that we are society at war. All the diversity, all the potentiality of the Jewish people is not expressed because we are a society in conflict. All civil issues are put to the back burner, and the only issue that we address is the issue of do we make territorial compromise, don't we make territorial compromise if we're going to move ahead, how are we going to move ahead. All the other issues are disregarded. The result is that Israel, to some extent, is caught in a state of suspended animation. And the creativity and the diversity that is within it is not fully appreciated in the world. There are well over 150 Israel uh, organizations of Jewish-Arab cooperation in Israel. The vast majority of Jews, let alone of the rest of the world, have never heard of these activities. They don't know about them. They don't know of the music, of the art, of the cultural vitality, of the, all the in innovation that takes place within our society. They don't know of the religious diversity. They don't know of the religious creativity. They don't know of the sources. They have monochromatic perspectives of all these things. All Almost entirely determined by politics. If you go around and you look for them to find out names of rabbis, for example, the rabbis they will be able to identify are those related to politics. Almost anything that has any significance in terms of diaspora perception is somehow related to politics. Even Jews don't appreciate the potentiality that there is within Israel, let alone the rest of the world. And therefore what I'm saying is that we have to break this bottleneck. And we can only break this bottleneck through political breakthrough. When there is political breakthrough, all this diversity has the opportunity to relate to people in different places of the world with creativity, to make Israel a new reality, to make people understand that simply rallying um, uh, Pavlov-like to any possible assault on Israel's well-being is not what it means to be a Jew. There's more to a Jew than simply rallying around a flag. And, and, that, and that diversity and that beauty and that opportunity will only come about through a breakthrough. But if that identity is simply preserved because Israel is threatened and because there are people that hate us and there are people that hate us and Israel is threatened and it is at risk and it is right that people should support Israel to be able to protect itself. Nevertheless, that kind of identity is not self-sustaining. It's not something you will be able to pass on to future generations and therefore if we don't break through that bottleneck, I'm not optimistic at all about our future. But because I am optimistic about our future, I'm confident that that bottleneck is going to be broken. Thank you.